Good morning, GYC. You can do better than that. Than that. Good morning, GYC. Good morning. So let's start the day off with a couple of songs. Amen. And the first one is going to be 522. My hope is built on nothing less. Trust the sweetest faith, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His hope is covenant and blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. But in his righteousness alone, all blessed to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. Do we have hope in nothing less? Let us turn and sing our next song, which is song 184, Jesus Paid It All. God is amazing, isn't he? Amen? Amen. He paid it all for us. He gave it all. And he risked everything all for us. He covered us with his righteousness. He covers us with his righteousness. So that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Please stand with us as we sing our opening song and our theme song, Before the Throne. Depart. 
No tongue can bid me thence depart. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me all the guilt within, upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me, to look on him and pardon me. Beholding there the risen Lamb, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. Born with himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased by his blood, my life is filled with Christ on high, with Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. Good morning. You can have a seat. How many of you brought your Bibles today? Amen. Amen. Are you ready uh, for the message today? Amen. 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 Okay, we're going to open our Bibles and we're going to go to Psalms chapter 100. And when you have it, please stand up again. Psalms 100. And the Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Let us bow our heads and we're going to pray. Our Father in heaven, I still wonder why the mighty God, the King of Kings, the one who rules the, ro the world's galaxies, is willing to spend time with us sinners. Lord, we ask in a special way that you will touch our hearts. You will show our needs, but also, Lord, you will supply our needs. We are nothing without you. This convention center is big, but Lord, it's not enough for you. My Father, this is just showing me that's your love that is carrying us so far. So I plead in a special way for the messenger that you have for, for us today. But I also pray for the message. Please speak to us this morning. Break our hearts, but change us. We ask this not because we deserve anything, Lord, but because Jesus died on the cross and we can claim his blood for ourselves. Please bless us today. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Storms may on seas unknown while we journey towards our home surely we'll learn what grace is for as we sail to heaven shore so 
lend us strength, O pilgrim guide. Sin would drown us in its tide. Be close at hand and go before as we sail to heaven shore. Holy Spirit, lead us on. Give us courage, bring the song. Lord, we trust your Father's care. will convey us safely there. Open or seal off every I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. God is good all and all the time. Is Say it again. God is good all the time. and all the time. Is good. Yes, Psalm 100 verse 5. For the Lord is good. When God blesses, He is good. When God punishes, He is good. When God answers your prayer, He is good. When God does not answer your prayer, finish it for me, He is good. And so I say again, God is good. And all the time, without exception, what conclusion may we draw? It is impossible for God to do anything mean. That's right. Mm-hmm. So those of us who've had a beef with God, we need to apologize to God. Let God be true. Finish it for me. And every man a liar. God is good. 
Good morning, everyone. You look nice this morning. Did you sleep well? In the book, in the book, Our High Calling, page 116, paragraph 2, Ella White writes, listen carefully, your last thought at night, your first thought in the morning should be of him in whom is centered your hope of eternal life. The servant of the Lord counsels us, fall asleep with Jesus on your mind. Wake up with Jesus on your mind. I'm happy to see you. I need your permission to rebuke you. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed stay quiet. <laughs> I'm quite serious. Let me tell you what I have observed. And I realize people are coming in, so my initial remarks do not apply to them. There is a lack of discipline. I was listening to the speaker last night and Wednesday night, and there was a constant procession of people getting up, walking out, getting up, walking out, getting up and I said Lord do all these people have medical emergencies I told you last night uh, yesterday morning imagine you're in the presence of an earthly judge what is it you cannot do and as you made a list of what you cannot do I told you apply that even more intensely to God listen to Malachi chapter 1 don't go just listen or you may go if you like the burden of the word of the Lord to, Malach, to Israel by Malachi. Chapter 1 from verse 1. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob. Verse 3. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritages waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall be called the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. God is saying, when I'm through with you, people will regard you as those with whom I have been angry all the time. He's referring to his people. Verse 5, And ye shall, your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Now listen to verse 6. Listen carefully. I'm pleading for reverence for God. A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. Now I told you yesterday, think of how you'd behave in front of a judge, and think of how you behave in front of God. That approach is biblical. God is saying, if a son honoreth his father, and the servant, Malachi 1, 6, his master, if then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear, saith the Lord of hosts, unto you, O priests, that despise my name? But ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? God says, you disrespect me. The people said, how? By getting up, and walking back and forth during the preaching of the Word of God by getting up and walking back and forth in the presence of a holy God. Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. Verse 8, listen to God, listen carefully. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? A sacrifice was supposed to be without blemish. They brought blind animals, lame animals, sick animals, and God said, if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Why are you bringing these animals to me? Now listen to what he says. Offer it now to thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Or regard thy person, saith the Lord of hosts. God is saying, if your governor... Your mayor, 
your counsel person will not accept your behavior why are you bringing it to me listen to me carefully please don't regret that I was asked to speak <laughs> respect this is a church I heard two and a half amens anymore this is a church why because of the purpose that brings us here God is present remove thy shoes from off thy feet for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground we are in a church I remember you know I wonder what's happening to us and I'll take all my time don't panic I remember when you saw a ponytail you knew that was a woman are you with me now you see a ponytail you've got to walk around and look the person in the face to determine is this a man or a woman you know ladies may you know ladies put a bun right up here a bun hot cross bun <laughs> now <laughs> men do that remember you know ladies put something across here to keep the hair in place you know that thing that comes here you know what I'm talking about it has little teeth to stay in place <laughs> men do that those of you who are West Indians and African Americans remember years ago ladies would braid their hair just to keep it in place until they had time to really fix it are you with me now men braid their hair and come to church as far as I can see the Bible tells ladies cover your hair in church the ladies don't the men said okay we'll cover ours <laughs> so men come into church with caps and hats by the way if you're a man take your hat off I am pleading for God it's safer if a preacher does it because if God starts to defend himself directly people die do you love me a little bit <laughs> but you're listening to a frustrated man you know I travel a lot by God's grace and I'm often in Islamic countries Malaysia Indonesia uh, Kenya has a large Islamic population Tanzania India Bangladesh not particularly India but Bangladesh and I go by mosques and when they're worshiping no one walks up and down each man is focused on Allah you walk by a Jehovah's Witness Church everyone in the building no one in the parking lot chatting everyone in the building discussing the doctrines whatever you may think of the doctrines. you come to an Adventist gathering and it's like a farmers market I look for avocados then I look for plums look for pears I get up like everyone has a medical emergency or needs to go to Dairy Queen we've got to get up and walk stay where you are please for the next 30 minutes the Holy Spirit is very sensitive you know what Jesus said whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him are you with me Matthew 12 but whoso speaketh a word against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world neither in the world to come that leads me to conclude of the father the son the Holy Ghost the most sensitive the most thin-skinned member of the Godhead is the Holy Ghost so when you're disrespectful to God and the Holy Ghost backs up I suffer remember Achan he stole a Babylonish garment what happened to the Israelite army they lost a battle the nation suffered because one man was disrespectful I, let me say it again when there's disrespect for God and the Holy Ghost backs up I suffer now this may sound harsh let me say it. who has to get up and walk out for any reason do it now okay let's pray well no, not pray yet um, I still have to bother you a little longer what's this 
What's that? This morning as I was walking to this place, I was walking with my Bible, and this man came up behind me. He actually came into the building. I don't know if he left, but, uh, and he saw the Bible in my hand. So he asked me, he said, I, think, I don't recall exactly what he said, but a good book or something. And he looked at the Bible, and he, then he asked me, uh, where am I going? What am I doing? I said, I'm going to a conference. He said, what kind of conference? I said, a youth conference. Uh, what kind of youth conference? A Bible conference. He said, what's that? I said, well, we come together, workshops, seminars. He actually came in. I'm not sure. If, is he here? Where? Oh, give me your name again. What's the name? Sam. Sam. Yeah, Sam, God bless you. He came in. I said, look, he said, I don't have a badge. I said, you don't need a badge, you're with me. <laughs> Are you with me? And so I came to the door and I told one of the ladies, he is with me. And she did not call the police, she let us through. <laughs> but he saw a Bible. Now, if Sam had seen a phone, he would not have asked me, what are you doing with a phone? But he saw a Bible. Somebody say amen for the Bible. Walk with the Bible. Let someone see. Don't hide behind a phone. God knows your heart. You're trying to hide that you're Christian. That's what you're doing. Okay, you don't like me anymore. I understand. Turn this off. Turn your Bible on. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say what? Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Favor number three, what's that? Think. Let's pray. Father in heaven, if I have been too hard on your people, forgive me, dear God. But I did it out of love for them and respect for you. Now, Father, grant me a measure of your spirit that I may deliver this message for your glory and for their blessing, dear God. You love these young people gathered before you, and so do I. I ask in the name of Jesus, bless them, their God. Give them a consciousness of your presence. And that the angels who come into your presence veil their faces. How much more should we come with reverence before the God of heaven and earth? Put your words in my mouth. Bless our brother Sammy, I pray, who came in. Speak to his life. Provide his needs. Bless his family, dear God. And let this day mark a turning point in his life. Hear this humble prayer, dear God. I offer it in Jesus' name. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Stay where you are. Don't move. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. We'll read verse 7. Quickly. You actually should know this verse without looking. Say it with me. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Let's look at that verse. This time we shall read it microscopically. Listen again. And the Lord God, stop. Who is that? Yes, the Lord God. Who is that? Don't say God, you're right, but Jesus Christ. Now, he wasn't called Jesus Christ then, but it is the same person who died on Calvary. The Lord God, Jesus Christ, for, so that's God. That's the person. Here comes the action. Formed man. Here comes the material. The dust of the ground. Stop. In that verse, we have two discrete actions. Our subject this morning, the value of dirt. What did I say? What was our subject yesterday? <laughs> Laughing out loud. The Lord God. What's his name? Jesus. Formed man of the dust of the ground. Stop. That's one action. What do we have? Something lying on the ground, beautifully formed, but lifeless. Second action and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. What gave vitality? What gave meaning and purpose to that thing so beautifully made? It was what God breathed into him. What was he made from? The dust of the ground. Stay in Genesis 2. Let's read verse 9. The Bible says, 
and out of the ground, may the Lord God to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We have the ground again. The ground produced Adam, now the ground produces trees. Question for you, are trees a, f a life form, yes or no? Yes. yes, they live. Now, it's not the same life in a man. Trees are a form of life produced by the ground. Adam, from the ground, God breathed the breath of life into him. Stay in Genesis 2. Let's go to verse 19, our subject, the value of dirt. Verse 19, the Bible says, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the earth and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So we have the ground in Genesis 2, 7. We have the ground in Genesis 2, 9. We have the ground in Genesis 2, 19. Man came from the ground. Verse 7, Plants and trees from the ground, verse 9. Animals from the ground, verse 19. What is the difference? You say the breath of life. But trees have life. Ah. Sister, you're right. Nice, attractive vegetarian. <laughs> Listen to what the Bible says in Genesis 1, 26. And God said... Say it without looking. Don't look into your Bible. Say this verse. Genesis 1, 26. What does it say? And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Stop. Man was made from the ground. Trees came from the ground. Animals came from the dirt. But only man was made in the image of God. Can you say amen? amen. What's our subject? the value of dirt. Let's take a closer look at dirt. Let's go to Genesis 3. We read from verse 17, our subject, the value of dirt. Adam has sinned, Eve has sinned, and God has come down to dish out his judgment. There's judgment for every action, my friends. It may take a long time. In the parable of the talents, the Bible says in Matthew 25, verse 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them after a long time, meaning you can run, but you can't hide. Genesis 3, verse 17, the Bible says, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth unto thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken. Now pick up the verse with me, if you have the King James Version. For what? Dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. God looks at a man who is alive, and what does God call him in his sinful condition? Dirt. Now, why do I say his sinful condition? Because Adam was not redeemed until Genesis 3.21. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins, representing the righteousness of Christ. In his fallen condition, God looked Adam in the eye and said, you are dirt. Not breath. Let's go to Genesis 18, our subject, the value of dirt. Thank you for not getting up and moving around. I appreciate it so much. God bless you. In every church, there are rebellious people whose chief talent is to let you know, I am not doing what you say. Christ dealt with that. John 6, 70, have I not chosen you 12? One of you is the devil. In every gathering, there are people who specialize in rebellion. But thank you for staying where you are, because when you took the SAT, you didn't walk around. Am I right? When you took the ACT, you didn't move around. When you took the LSAT for the law school, you didn't move around. When you took whatever you took, you stayed put. What book did I say? What chapter? 
Reading from verse 23, our subject, the value of dirt. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Verse 26, and God said, and the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sake. This is the verse 27. And Abraham answered and said, Read it with me now. Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, keep reading, which am but dust and ashes. Abraham said, How can someone who is just dirt? Speak to God that way. Dirt. There's a point behind this. Stay with me. Go to Psalm 104, 103. Our subject is what? The value of dirt. Psalm 103, verses 13 and 14. Do you have that? Well, somebody answer me. Do you have that? Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Read verse 14. For he knoweth our frame. Keep reading. He remembereth that we are dust. When God considers our weaknesses, our tendencies to evil, all these things, he said, look, that's because you are dust. You're weak. You're dirt. Not breath, dust. Having said that, listen again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. When God made the angels, he did not use dirt. He didn't use anything. Listen to how angels were made. Psalm 148, verses 1, 2, and 5. Psalm 148, verses 1, 2, and 5. Listen to how the Bible describes the creation of angels. When you found it, say amen. amen. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise ye Him, all His angels. Praise ye Him, all His hosts. Verse 5, let them praise the name of the Lord. Read with me now. For He commanded and they were created. God made the angels out of thin air. He just called them and they came. Let me say it again. I miss, you missed it and it's my fault. God did not use dirt. There's no dirt in heaven as far as we know. God just said, angels, come. And the angels appeared. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 38, paragraph 3. Christ was the Son of God. He was one with Him before the angels were called into existence. No dirt. Listen to the creation of Lucifer. Ezekiel 28, reading from verse 13. His creation was slightly different. Or the way he looked after he was made different from any other angel. Ezekiel 28, reading from verse 13, our subject, the value of dirt. Thank you for your reverence. I really mean that from my heart. Please extend it to all other speakers, whether in this format or in seminars. When you go into a seminar, decide to stay. Don't go to sample, then walk out. You disrupt people. Make up your mind to stay. Read the description outside the door. Go in, sit down. All right. We're looking at the creation of whom? Lucifer. Verse 13, Ezekiel 28. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the jasper onyx, and the, what's that third stone? The sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. Now, God says, 
That's how the Bible describes Lucifer, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, sorry. Sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, and gold. That's Lucifer. Covered with these things, they were part of him. When God came to make man, God only used dirt. Now, let me introduce you to something you already know but did not notice. Go to Genesis 2. Genesis 2, we'll read from verse 10. Our subject, the value of dirt. When you found that, say amen. amen. The Bible says, And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There's delium and the onyx stone. Pause. Let's reread microscopically. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into how many heads? Four. The name of the first is Pison. Now listen. That is it which compasseth where? The whole land of Havilah. Keep reading. Where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. So we have gold. There's delium and the onyx stone. The onyx is a family with, the, uh, with several other precious stones that come under onyx. Follow me closely. When was the solid earth made? Before or after Adam? Before. Genesis 2 verse 9. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered unto one place. Let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. The gathering together of the waters called he seas. So the dry land, it was there on day 3. Before Adam was made on day 6. Now, the gold was there before Adam was made. I get the impression you're not following me. The precious stones were on the earth before Adam was made. As a matter of fact, in Patriarchs and Prophets, Ellen White says, the gold and the precious stones lay on the surface of the earth. They were only buried after the flood. What am I trying to say? When God came to make Adam, God had available to him what? Gold. He could have used gold or onyx. Thank you, assistant preacher. <laughs> he could have used delium. Now, the Bible scholars say delium can mean a resin from the bark of a tree or a precious stone. Since it appears with gold and onyx stone, we may assume it. Its application there is a precious stone. God could have chosen onyx, chalcedony, the agate, gold, delium to make Adam. Gold has always been valuable. No economy has ever been based on dirt. Fort Knox is not heavily guarded because it contains dirt. It is the most heavily guarded building because it contains, I believe, the gold deposits of the United States, which is the largest of all countries. I think Germany is second. The National Monetary Fund is third. Gold. In times of crisis, in times of war, in times of chaos, the most reliable standard of measuring value is gold. And so during the Holocaust, the Nazis took gold from the teeth of the Jews. Gold. I've never heard of a dirt rush. We discovered dirt in California. Get on your wagon. We have found one nugget of gold. Everybody moves. Gold is value. Here comes Jesus Christ, the Creator to make your father. He bypasses gold. He bypasses delium. He bypasses onyx. 
He bypasses all the precious material that he himself placed on the surface of the earth readily available to him. He just had to scoop up dirt, uh, gold, and make a no, 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 no. The Creator said, I will make him out of dirt, and I will put my image in dirt. You see, you make something out of gold, even before it's made, it has value. Are you with me? Just because it's made of gold. The, before it's made, it has value. The raw material has value. Dirt. To produce a divine character in gold would be spectacular, but not as spectacular as producing a divine image in dirt. You see, the, reprodu the reproduction of the image of God in us its ultimate aim is the glory of God. I said that clumsily. Forgive me. Let me try again. When Jesus saw Nathanael, what did Nathanael say about Jesus when he was told about Christ? Can any good thing come out of where? That's it. Now, you'd expect a good thing to come out of a monastery. Hmm? a nunnery, a graduate school, not Nazareth. That's dirt. But out of Nazareth came Jesus. Out of dirt came Adam. Out of the ghetto can come me. Out of the burial can come you. Off the reservation can come someone in the image of God. Angels, they're magicians who get on stage and they uh, take a handkerchief. Up comes a dove. I'm not telling you go watch magic, but it happens. Takes a handkerchief and a dove. Then he does that, two doves. Takes off his hat, a rabbit. God took, now, God didn't make man by using his hands. I've preached that sermon, if you've heard it, hands free operation. But I can't get into that now. But let's assume he took his hands, which he didn't. The angels are watching God with a handful of dirt. What will he do with this dirt? And they're watching. And God, and they're watching. And out of the dirt, comes a divine nature, divine character. And the angels say, how did he do that? How did he do that? A handful of dirt, and he produces the divine character. How did he do that? Now, this is what must happen in your life. The angels must marvel. That guy was a crack dealer. Dirt. Hmm? She was a prostitute, dirt. How did God produce his character in that man, in that woman? This is the wonder of the gospel, to produce divinity in dirt. Now, to bring divinity out of gold is not that spectacular, but out of dirt. So your father was a pimp. Your mother was a hooker. And God produces you. Or you're the man, the pimp. God takes him and makes him the Apostle Paul. And the angels wonder how. That's the power of the gospel. Amen. You know, there's a movie that came out last year called Straight Out of Compton. The brothers know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Straight Out of Compton. Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, Easy E, those fellows. Out of Compton. You know Compton? Read about Compton, <laughs> the crime, the bloods and the crips, you know, the violence. Read about Compton, south of Los Angeles. Straight out of Compton, straight out of dirt. Yeah. Straight out of dirt comes divinity. Somebody say amen. amen. That's the power of the gospel. 
God produces his character in dirt. So your value has nothing to do with you. It has to do with God, what God desires to do in you. You sitting there saying, nobody loves me. You have no self-esteem. You're dirt. And God whispers to you now, he says, my daughter, my son, I know you're dirt. I made you dirt. Now you come to me, and from this dirt, I will produce the divine character. You and I must remember. Let me give you this quotation. It expresses this better than I could. Signs of the Times, September 24, 1894, paragraph 4. Let me tell you a secret about me when I preach. Don't tell anyone. I've only told this to one other person. I'm telling it to you. I've only told this to one other person. You know, I preach from my head. And the way God disciplines me to slow down, He blocks my memory. <laughs> just to slow me down, He does. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> he just blocks it. And that's His way of saying, my son, slow down. Because I have this bad habit of running along like a freight train. Bad habit. Anyway. God can take dirt and produce the divine image. That's the majesty, that is the power of the gospel. Now let's go back to Ellen White's quotation. Signs of the Times, September 24, 1894, paragraph 4. Listen carefully after you have recorded the reference. What did I say? Signs of the Times, September 24. 1894, paragraph 4. Listen carefully. It is the prerogative of God alone to prescribe the duty of men and angels. The will of God is a perfect will and must be obeyed as it is set forth in His holy law because every requirement is just. From commandment 1 to commandment 10, Every requirement is just and is set forth by infinite wisdom. The law of God should be obeyed even though there were no authority to enforce it and no rewards for its obedience. Keep listening. The highest in interest of men and angels are conserved in obeying the law or the will of God. God's will as expressed in His law is the supreme will. Let me say it differently. The Ten Commandments represent the highest expression of the will of God. God's will expressed in His law is the supreme will, and no invention, no device of men can take its place. Keep listening. Obedience to the commandments of men keeping Sunday for the Sabbath instead of the commandments of God will be as abomination in the sight of God because what God requires is essential to the highest good of His subjects and is therefore essential to the glory of God. Let me say that again. The conclusion of that statement, what God requires of you, obedience to His commandments, is connected to God's glory. So as you obey by the power of Christ and the character of God is reproduced in your life, God is glorified. Out of dirt comes divinity. Why? That God may get the glory that the angelic host and unfallen worlds may marvel how could God produce His character in dirt. I can understand from gold, but dirt That's what God can do for you. When I say God, I mean Christ. The one who made Adam from dirt can produce his character in the dirt of your life. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters, the dirt of my life. God wants that opportunity to bring glory to himself by reproducing his character in your life. You just came out of prison. God says, come to me. You didn't have to come out of prison. You could have come to him in prison. You're in that rehab, come to me. You're in an abusive relationship, come to me. Can't find a job, come to me. The cocaine is in your veins, come to me. 
The stuff in your nostrils, come to me, says God, and I will take this life and make of it something that marvels the entire universe. Not something similar to the life of Christ. The precise life Christ lived on this earth is the life we must live through the power of God. And so the Bible says, well, He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The same mind by which Christ lived is the mind by which we might live, that in this dirt might be produced by the power of God, the very character of God. My brothers and sisters, the value of dirt is what God does in our lives. God wants to make of your life something of wonder, something that causes people to turn around and take a second look, as we say to do a double take. This morning I ask you quite simply, as time expires, do not want God to change your life, transform your life, and put you on a pedestal of hope and bright expectation. How many of you want God to change your life? Let me see your hand. To give value to your life, stand up with me. The value of dirt is what God does with it. It's all of God. And the more valueless the material, the greater the marvel of what God can do with the life. Listen to me again. God can change your life from dirt to divinity. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear God of heaven and earth, we thank you for your power. We thank you, dear God, that as we walk in the light of your law, by the power of your Spirit, the character produced brings glory to your name. It amazes the universe, dear God. We thank you that you can produce divinity in dirt. We thank you you chose dirt, not gold, to make us and to make of us your character. I ask you, dear God, in the name of Jesus, who took this same dirt and lived a flawless life and reproduced your character in the dirt he took, in his name, dear God, work in our lives. Enter the mind of that young man, that young woman who thinks nothing of himself. Enter the life of that person who has no sense of value. Enter that person's life, dear God, and let him know, let her know, I, the Creator, can produce divinity in the dirt of your life. Hear this humble prayer. And Father, take all the glory as we reflect your character. Save us when you come, dear God, so that we might occupy a position that even unfallen angels will not enjoy. Hear this humble prayer. Bless your people, I pray, in Jesus' name and for his sake. Let God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the day's activities.